Hi guys and welcome back. I know that you're lacking boundaries, you're not being treated the way you are supposed to be treated and they're getting away with a lot of stuff that they shouldn't really. So let me center you back into your central position. Okay, let's start. Welcome to my channel. My name is Isha. I'm a digital marketer but also your mindset mentor and we talk all things self-development, self-improvement, self-acceptance, self-acknowledgement and self-investment in every way possible because that my friends is what gets you ahead in life okay and that is exactly what will get you the respect that you deserve but above all do you know what it really is that gets you the respect that you deserve especially when it comes to friends family people and work in general it's when you have very strong boundaries and now well this is probably going to be a boundary 101 class today so maybe take notes because i have been there done that been there been treated that way also okay never a good feeling it's never a good feeling in fact just recently let me give you guys an example okay even though i don't like sharing too many personal stories on here but we all know stories are relatable so i'm just here trying to be a little bit more relatable i guess here you go recently i had a friend we made a plan to go to two different places during the same trip right so like we thought that, you know, we're going to go to the movies, but before that, we're also going to go to Sephora because there was like a few things that I personally needed. And so I was really excited for that. Now, here's the thing. That person comes so late that they had me waiting there for over an hour, first of all. Secondly, now the Sephora plan is like out of the window because that person had decided that's not even happening like they're just going to the movies and like that's all like Sephora what like it, it almost felt like they forgot about it I did not like how that went first of all waiting for that long nobody does that okay waiting sometimes here and there I understand life happens shit happens things happen there's always an explanation I understand that we've all been there it happens However, if you notice a pattern, which with this friend, this particular friend, I was noticing a pattern where always late and like super late. I'm not even talking about 15 minutes late or something. No, it's like way more than 40 minutes at least. And I think that's a lot for someone to wait that long. I understand maybe it's a part of Dubai culture that everybody is like never really on time. And maybe it's cool to be this way, blah, blah, blah. But that's not a me problem. No, 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 not on my watch, not with me, not for me, okay? You can do that with all the other people. I don't do that and I don't like to face that either. Unless it's a really, really good reason or like whatsoever, okay? We understand life happens, but it doesn't happen that often. It doesn't happen every time. It doesn't happen like a pattern every single time. When that starts to happen, you have to question yourself. Hey, does this person even prioritize me? No. Does this person respect my time? No, because it's all about that person and everything is happening on their watch, right? Because that is how they make everybody feel. So what happened was, hey, I'm here. And I'm like, and by the way, I had already told that person, hey, if you're going to be super late today, I probably will not go because I have to do both things. And if both are not happening, what's the point of making a plan? Because if I'm leaving the house, I want to get everything kind of done because you guys know I don't like to leave my house that often until unless I'm sure that I look cute today and I have probably the energy to face the world today as an introvert only then I step out of the house okay so there's no force on earth that will get me out of the house and for this time I was super super excited to actually go anyhow the person messages me like last minute right and I'm like hmm, well shops are about to be closed very little time left Oh, it's fine. We can do this some other time. And I'm like, it almost feels like my plan wasn't even a part of a plan, was it? Mm, clearly not. The only plan that you were wanting to go ahead with, that's all you made time for. And like, you expect me to roll with it every single time. You know what? It can happen once. It can happen twice. Friendship, I understand. But it's not going to happen the fourth or the fifth time. Like, then I will be the fool. Okay, and so I had to call it quits. I was like, do you know what? I don't like where this is going. It feels very disrespectful. You know exactly what's going on. Good luck. That's all I said. I don't have to debate. I don't have to argue. I don't have to go back and forth with someone. I don't have the time and energy for that. I'm not interested. Okay, and that person went, 
oh, I'm sorry, you know what, there was too much going on, this person, that person, I had to be there, I had to be there, then I left at this time, oh, when you messaged me, I left, like, like if I indulge and entertain uh, in that conversation now, it will be like a lot of back and forth, back and forth, then we already know and have enough evidence to know that people know what they are doing. If it's a grown-ass adult person, they know what they're doing, they know what they're all about, they know what they're prioritizing, they know what they respect and they don't respect. They know what they're doing. So does it make sense for you to go back and forth with people? Absolutely not. Never do that. Don't do that with your friends. Don't do that with your relatives. Don't do that with uh, the opposite gender. You just absolutely don't get into debates for no reason when people know exactly what they're doing. They know when they're disrespecting your time. They know when they are not prioritizing your plans, but only their plan is the valid thing to do. Like that's all, nothing else. Like nobody else has the space to be in my world. Like there's no capacity. If they're not providing that capacity, but you constantly are, you need to call them out. So that was one instance. Even though, by the way, after canceling that plan, I was like, huh, here I am, kind of looking cute kind of ready, mentally, totally prepared to go. And I'm super, super, like every cell of my body is hating that now I'm out of plans. Oopsie, <laughs> you know, but within the next 10 minutes or so, like the power that I felt, like the self-respect that I felt, the self-discipline that I felt, do you know how much courage it takes for you to just like drop a plan just because you're constantly being, you know, made to wait or kind of disrespected? Do you know how much power that gives to you when you re when you can reject something like this and you're like, do you know what? Give enough chances, I think we're done here. Thank you very much. That is so, so, so liberating and that is so empowering. And again, by the way, I don't really believe you have to debate and argue in order to feel empowered. No, 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 no. You just have to take the right action, show by your behavior and your attitude and you're done, out, that's it. And now that was just like one instance. Now here is another one. Okay, here's another one. It was, I would say, oh, I don't even want to say this out loud. Uh, but it is what it is. You may learn something from this story. I made a wonderful friend, know this person for a very, very long time, right? Lovely lady. However, I think the thing with me is when I'm friends with someone, I'm very like, I'm just myself. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm lively, I'm bubbly, silly, funny, talkative, whatever. But I'm highly, highly supportive and empowering. That is like one thing I know I come with when I come into a friendship or any kind of connection. Supportive, got your back, let's go, clap for you, you know, that kind of stuff. And I like when people are like that, very open-hearted, supportive, encouraging. We want everybody to do their best and be their best also. Just like we do for ourselves, we want the same for other people also, right? And I don't know many people like that, which is very unfortunate. However, I take pride in being that type of friend, in being that type of person. So now that being said, now you have the backstory. Now, I have built a beautiful friendship with that person, by the way, you know, like all the time in touch, in contact, blah, blah, blah. Even when I'm traveling, there's always like this connection. And I'm also somebody who, you know, who wouldn't judge their friends, whatever their life situations are, whatever their relationships look like. If anything, I could advise you, support you in a way, be there to hear you out. I'm not going to judge you if you have like messed up relations and this, that. That's, I think that's a your, like, like that's a you problem because I think it's not my place. You sort it out. If you need my help, any advice, I can only talk that much. You know what I mean? Considering that, I regarded this person on a kind of higher level, you know, in a way that they, they are in a more senior position than me. Like, you know, settled, married, this, that, you know, all of that. Like a beautiful house and you know, all that. So I think that that person probably is like... Um, probably a little bit, you know, on the next level than me. I also consider this person as like, you know, worthy or probably respectful, or maybe this, or maybe that's just like the good in me trying to see the good in every person, I don't know. But you know, I regarded this person on a higher level, right? Because imagine someone um, settled, married, has a home, fully provided, you know, all that good stuff. I love that, I love that for all women. Of course, why not? You all deserve that. So I regard it as like, wow, that is so cool, you know, so happy for you. So I'm already thinking in my head, that person is happy where they're at. As much as of a messed up relationship they have, personally, I understand that. So I'm like, okay, that person is happy, has it together. As much as their personal relationships suck, again, that's their problem. 
but I regard them as like a happy person, got it together, cool, awesome, right? I don't see that that person should have to, you know, compete with others or copy others because why? You are in a good position in your life already. Like, why would you even feel triggered by someone else? Like, I wouldn't, I, I don't understand that concept. But here's what started to happen, surprisingly. Every time I would meet this person, whether it's in a joking way, whether it's when we are laughing, talking, whatever, they would also like just say some weird things that later on I would be left to think about that like what was that and where did that come from why would that person say stuff like that and now the thing is when you're with your friends i'm sure you're the same way we don't have our defenses high we are not always on alert mode self-aware mode all the time when we're around our friends we're like we let it easy we let our guards down we're not always like I detect uh, something, uh, I have to answer right there and then I have to be so alert. Like, at least I'm not that type of person, you know. I, I just sit easy, chill, relax, fun, this, that. I don't mean bad for anyone, so I believe that they also don't for me as well, right? So, like, I, I believe, like, I'm sincere, so the next person is going to be sincere too. But it's not always the case. So every single time, that person would have something to say about me. Like, for example, if they know that, you know, I've studied in private schools or, like, my family or, like, my father. Like, they would just know things, get information from me, whatever. But then kind of, like, next time, use it to say something out of it in a very sarcastic way. You know what I mean? Or if in front of her, somebody says something nice about me, she would notice and next time has something to say about that too. So that was one thing that was happening repeatedly. And I was like, oh, that's so draining. Number two, big one. Every single experience that I would have, whether I was traveling more, whether I was wearing this dress, whether I do my makeup a certain way, whether I talk a certain way, whether I get treated by people a certain way, especially also from the opposite gender, you know, I mean, I don't like to talk too many personal things on here, but whether it's in relationships or like whatever, you know, they would see how I get treated or princess treatment, whatever. And, you know, she would want to kind of replicate that too. She would want to replicate everything so much so that it at some point kind of got scary that even when she moved house and I went to the new house, right? It's like, hmm, that carpet looks exactly like mine. Okay, those flowers exactly the ones I have and they're even positioned in the same place like mine also okay everything in the kitchen like for example I I like gold cutlery it goes well with the aesthetics right that person has the same I wear a certain dress next thing you know that person has the same I have something designer next thing you know that person is trying to do the same thing and it's like I think in, to my brain it never made sense and I kept ignoring all these things for quite some time because a part of me being an Aries or even generally a human design projector I don't see crap in a lot of people when I do I'm like okay let's ignore this time let's ignore next time you know because if I start reacting on everything I'm like not many people that I like and so if I you know cut off everybody left right center I'll be left alone and I know that a lot of people think that way. We think that, you know what, there's only this many people that I like. If I start cutting people off left, right, center, I'll be left out alone. What am I gonna do alone, right? So that is why sometimes I do give people the chance. You know what I mean? I know you shouldn't. Talking about having barriers today and having self-respect, I know you shouldn't give that many chances. I consciously always know how many chances I've given to someone. Sometimes it's only one and I'm done. Sometimes it's like, okay, I give you the benefit of the doubt two, three times. Okay, fine. But then at some point when I know, okay, it's getting out of control, I am very quick at calling it quits and I will be very cold. I will stop giving you any kind of access. Like there is nothing for you to copy from me any further. Thank you. Because it's so annoying when somebody tries to replicate everything about you. It gets so scary to a point where you almost feel like that person wants to be in my shoes so much so that they may one day try to eliminate me totally from the picture just to get in my shoes. Like it gets really stalkerish, obsessive, kind of crazy vibe feeling. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, but you get the point. I don't know if you've ever been in a place like that or you've felt like that. If you feel like somebody is copying you, you know what? Yes, they are. Because I remember I talked about this to another friend of mine and I was like, it, it feels a little bit strange because a lot of this is happening quite a lot. So I don't know if it should be this way. I don't want to say something bad. I don't want to think bad about someone, especially if I've been close to them. I want to keep that like, you know, consideration and that loyalty um, in place. 
And that person was like, Isha, maybe it's just, maybe you're just being paranoid. Maybe it's not that way. Maybe you're just, come on, you're on social media. You know, you, you do inspire people. So probably it's coming from that. So I was like, okay, well, all right, maybe let's roll with this information for now. <laughs> probably it's going to make things easier for me to handle. All right. Next thing you know, I see that we, when we started to meet in a group setting, yeah, now I'm observing that that person is kind of like disregarding me in a group setting. It's almost like if we are at a place, everybody is going to be served and I'm sat here with no glass in my hand. And I was even served tea that was cold. Yeah. And I didn't complain because that's not, it's not in my nature to like, if I'm invited to somebody's house, just kind of like point things out and like, oh, the food was cold. Uh, mm, no, I don't want, especially when there's also other people around. So I, I find that a little rude. So I wouldn't really do that. If you ask me, she did ask me, hey, you didn't have the tea. And I was like, yeah, it was a little cold, but anyway, it's fine. It doesn't matter. And I think maybe I should have said something. I don't know, but I think it's just not very respectful to be nagging when you are at somebody's house, you know what I mean? But normally people know what they're doing, to be very honest. And I'm not saying she did that on purpose. It Sometimes shit happens, I understand, I let it go. But it's just the fact that mm, I was being a little disregarded or kind of like on the sideline. You know, that is something you always should notice, number one. When everybody's talking in a group setting, and let's say now you are talking. That one particular person wouldn't want to listen to what you have to say. They're not interested all of a sudden. It's like, uh, she's talking, okay, I have to get up and do something. Especially when you have something interesting to say, like, oh my God, I had so much fun at my sister's wedding. Because that was the recent story I had, right? Because that is what went on in my life at the moment. So I was like, I had a wonderful trip to Pakistan. My sister's wedding was so much fun, blah, blah, blah. I also lost a lot of weight during that trip. Thank God. And you know, stuff like that. So I had like wonderful things to say, like I always do. And that person is like least interested in even hearing at all. Even though at that point, we met about after like, um, I guess like after like two or three months. By the way, forget that. Looking around, I almost feel like I came in my own house, just a bigger version of my own house. Yeah. So it's like, if I have a vase this size, that person has the same vase in a bigger size. You know, so it just kind of got very um nah kind of stalkerish crazy obsessive this that i just didn't know what to make out of it as such because it's also a wonderful person that has been nice and kind to me but at the same time if i detect those small little details it doesn't add up and it's like it's going more on the negative side and when i realized and detected that i was like you know what i have now enough evidence to believe that this is going to the negative side so i need to stop right here and i need to call it quits and i need to you know create a boundary here i don't want to give this person more access to me because there's always i think creative wonderful things happening in my life i'm always kind of growing or at least working towards growth in all areas of my life and that person comes with their own traumas, like everybody does, you know. And that person doesn't have a very healthy relation and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? I don't want any of that to rub off of me. Because you have to remember, guys, when somebody has, let's say, not a similar type of childhood like you do, or they don't have a protective father like you do, or they don't have pretty privilege like you do, yeah? Or they don't have that much probably empowerment like you do. I lead a very empowered life at the end of the day, you know, as a female, family, tick. Friends, good community, tick. Self-care, self-love, yes. Self-investment, tick, tick, tick. You know, my own work, my own business, yes, tick. So I see all these things as like a powerhouse. That's wonderful. My own place, my own pet, good clothes, yes. Nice shoes, nice, like everything, yes, yes, yes. Things are exactly the way I, may have dreamed ages ago, like every girl would dream, basically. I get to have everything or attain everything or work more towards things because I keep doing my inner work. I keep working towards things or I keep moving towards them. I think moving towards them would be the right um, word to choose or I keep attracting, even better word to choose, yes. I am capable of that because I keep working on myself. Like my self-development journey, it never ends, right? It never ends. So of course, a person like me will always be influential, somewhat creative, this, that, all of that. 
And when you are a person like that, and then you meet people that want to like take away your shine or disregard you, but they're also so inspired that they want to copy every single thing, but also publicly never acknowledge and disregard you. That then doesn't make sense because then now that's becoming very malicious and very like evil-ish, you know? And I don't like that type of energy because I'm very open-hearted, light, airy, all of that, lively, bubbly, whatever you want to call it. This is literally what defines my personality. Even though I'm an introvert, I'm still very lively and very bubbly and very funny and all of those things. I don't want to rip off these things from myself only because, you know, somebody's being mean to me or blah, 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 and I can't drop, wrap my head around what's happening, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to spend my time and energy on thinking about these kinds of things, you know? So they can go ahead and be mean and all of that, but just not in my vicinity, not in my capacity, not in my area, not in my container, not under my watch. No, honey. Like, imagine, you know, one day you say that, oh, I received flowers, another person also wants flowers, you know? And one day you say, yeah, I went there, I just had to purchase this, whatever. You know, because then that kind of friendship goes downhill because now you have to start hiding things from them. Now you can't tell them all your wonderful experiences that you're having because next thing you know, A, they're not that happy for you. B, they're trying to replicate the same thing now. They're trying to replicate even your life experiences. But they also always have something shit to say to you on your face as a joke thing as well. You know, there's only this much elegant and graceful that you can be. Yeah, at some point you'll be like, you know what? cold turkey you have to you have to you want to keep yourself safe and keep your frequency and energy and your radiance preserve that for yourself then you know what have boundaries go cold turkey and by the way by that i never mean you don't have to fight and debate and no 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 i'm not somebody who has a big ass mouth in fact if anything I dislike people who have a very big mouth because to me it shows where you are coming from, right? If you were not raised the right way, you will always have a big mouth. And by the way, this person we are talking about, this person knows they have a very big mouth, you know? And they see how I actually don't because of course, we have seen some time together where they have seen how I react to things, you know? They have seen that I don't open my mouth that foolishly like a crazy person, I really don't. You know, I just handle things in my own way and sometimes in a very assertive and a very cold way that may scare people People, but it's good for me because for me it works like a filter you know and that person totally tries to replicate that very quality of mine as well even though they're really failing at that but you get the point it's 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 just not healthy for us so have boundaries where you don't have to open a foul big ass mouth oh please no because I think that is very cheap no that shows that you were raised on the streets let's be very honest especially it's not very ladylike you want to be a lady show people by your action that you feel disrespected you don't have any time or capacity for this nope not under your watch not happening and keep it moving you know there's a billion people out there especially in your city in your country whatever you can have as many people around you as you want as many friends as you want whoever you know but just make sure you do have the boundaries because what happens is sometimes we do think and it's it's also a lesson that I've learned as well sometimes we think mm, too many boundaries mm, I will be alone blah 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 no 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 in fact what happens is that when somebody is around you let's say and they see you having boundaries with other people in your life of course they're looking at you they're hearing you they're listening to you they will see that and they will respect you also but if they see that most of the people in your life you let them get away with a lot you don't have boundaries then of course these people will also try to cross your boundaries because they see what you're all about and you don't care as much about yourself okay then i can get away with this too then why not me as well right so people will kind of mirror that to you like project that back to you so have boundaries with every single person in your life whether it's close relationships friendships even with your siblings don't let them disrespect you I have been in that place as well, by the way. I think talking about boundaries today, I have a middle sister who totally does not behave very well. On many occasions, created drama, gave me enough trauma. <laughs> Just like, like disrespect on like next level disrespect. And I've been in that place where I have tried to just be, just be nice, Isha, don't react the way she does keep your cool keep your calm yes it's gonna make you upset yeah you can maybe go and complain to your parents whatever but you know don't act like her 
because she seemed to always be this violent person that would always even be triggered by my very presence it was difficult to even breathe in the same room as her because she would just be triggered by my presence and i think now looking back every single time so much drama like she has this tendency of being quite violent and stuff and now you look at me i'm the complete opposite you know i'm more calm in that sense and violence i don't even kill a fly let alone be violent with people or want to kill them or want to hit them i don't do that i don't even have a very big ass mouth either right so some things i couldn't really wrap my head around now looking back i'm i can say that you know what i should have had more boundaries i should have said something or at least should have shown a very cold behavior whether in that situation i have support from anyone else or not or parents or this that whether i have that or not i should have my own back you know and i should have had a bit more i think uh, this assertiveness or this care for myself at least where i would speak up a little bit more you know or try not to you know be too considerate of that person because at the end of the day it's family no 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 sometimes when people are not acting like family what are you acting like a family for because family cannot not be one sided this is one lesson i've learned in my personal life family love relation friendship connections they can never be one sided and make sure that you never allow them to be one sided either because then you will be pouring so much into them what do you get in return nothing to show for yourself and people around you look at that how you're behaving how you let people get away with a lot just because you're a nice person or whatever they will also try to be the same for you but when they see hey this girl no she's no 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 she will speak up she'll be a bitch when she has to okay and i don't want to see that side of her no i want to be in her good books i want to be a good friend then they will remain like a good friend right if they see you don't have boundaries even with your own people and they're watching you they will also behave the same way and especially copycats like these type of people who don't have their own creativity or their own authenticity they will always copy what you have around you even if it's people misbehaving with you they will do the same thing too you know because they are literally in that ubiquitous energy where they just want to copy everything and every experience and every person and, and everything that you own or face or see or experience right they will literally replicate everything do you want more of that no at some point you have to speak up and be like hey this is your place you stay over there cuz we're literally not even the same and it's also literally so interesting when someone comes to you and says to you i mean whatever you have i have the same too we are no different at all we are so similar but in fact when you look at reality it's like actually we are so different you're wrong we are not similar at all i mean i know you want to be similar but you can't even be that you can't even be half of that you know and i have seen enough people like this in my personal life like in my own journey and guess what i always come out as a winner because do i argue no debate i don't have to i'll give you a chance once or twice only because i'm a good person and i want to come out feeling good about myself call me selfish but i want to be proud of the person that i am so of course sometimes i will give chances but i know exactly when i am and when i stop doing that and i'll literally be very cold and i'll make you realize what you have done anyway by the way people always know what they do but by your behaviors they will know like it it's like it will scream very loud when you go quiet it does scream very loud that something has happened and most of the time these people will be the loudest that have a lot to say about you to other people blah 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 does that matter do you care no because it doesn't affect the quality of your life if they were so similar they wouldn't be this way they would still be in your good books or at least on the same page or even if you guys get separated or whatever it's still like a respectful separation it's not a messy separation you know now again whether we're talking about friendships or relationships or even marriages when things end it doesn't have to be bitter okay please be a healed version of yourself and healed people don't go on talking about karma will see you i wish bad on you that's such low frequency behavior just because things didn't work out just because things didn't go right and so what and so what what you're going to be seeking revenge most of you all need to seek forgiveness not even revenge okay seek forgiveness and trust me you'll live a better life allow that person let them go let them have their own life experience you need to have your own life experience make sure you have a better one that's all you got to do literally that's all you got to do you want revenge have a better life experience better than them at least
there you go. That's your revenge. Works in your favor every single time. And it doesn't hurt anyone at the same time. Oh my god, I hope I don't delete this video and I hope that I get to upload this video because I feel like I have talked a little bit too many personal things on here today, which I really don't. I don't know why, because generally speaking, I don't like to talk about negative things a lot anyway. And especially when they're so personal about family, friendships, this, that, I, I'm not the one to talk about things like this. But do you know what? For the sake of the video, for you to have a lesson, to please do have boundaries, call out people. Sometimes, again, do it in a respectful manner, but at least do it and then go cold turkey. That's always the best, best, best strategy to have, especially as a lady, you know, because last thing we do is we don't do that over here. We deal with things firsthand and then we take action. What has to be done, we do exactly that and then that's it, next chapter, next. That's all. Don't dwell on it. Don't go back and forth with it. That never ends. It really never ends. And I know that a lot of guys give a lot of time and energy and effort in these things. Back and forth, bickering, back and forth, blah, 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 back and forth, fighting, debating. Mm. End it right there. Dude. Cut it, cut it. You shouldn't have time for this because this is literally you doing devil's work. You have so much space and free time in your life, you're letting the devil take over and do the things that he loves to do. You should be so busy being creative, create, have art. Like your life should be like art, okay? Everything around you should be like art. Like everything around you should be a reflection of God's love and blessings and all the good stuff. How do you even have the time and capacity to let the devil take over and do his job? For what? No, your time should be very filled with God creation, with life, with creativity, more than anything, because you're a lady. Even if you're a man watching me, you should be busy with your business making money. That's creation for you, please. The worst type of men on earth are the ones who have this ability to constantly argue with the women. What? You are debate and argue with the women? How gay does that even sound? Men are action-based, say, do stuff like this, okay? Not like any this bitter bickering energy. That's when you know this is a Kareem boy 101. You just detected a Kareem boy because Kareem boy are always triggered. They have no control on their feelings. They don't know how to regulate their emotions. So they do, oh my God. And when you separate from a Kareem boy, they get very bitter. They almost want to end your life. They want to ruin your life. You ruin your image. They will do all kinds of things to seek revenge somehow when they should be seeking forgiveness. They will seek revenge. That's how you know that's a Kareem boy. That's a very low quality person that you're dealing with. And there are very, very low quality people all around us, whether it's men or women. Sometimes they are in our own family. Sometimes they are in the form of a friend. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of you have them in the form of a husband or a wife. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck dealing with that. And I'm not gonna talk about that because that will be another video for another day but you have to keep doing your inner work and just show up as that identity. Show up as that person with an identity who does not dwell in this, who doesn't entertain this, who is not about this, who has all this bitter, bicker, this, that energy, who has deactivated that in her system. Because at the end of the day, what you see around you is all what's going on inside, right? And when on the inside, let's say you're feeling a little low or insecure or jealous or you lack creativity, then on the surface, how does it show up like? It's exactly like this. You know, not respecting people's time and always just be about yourself and, you know, maybe copying other people because you lack creativity, you lack priorities, you lack everything. And that is why you are not able to live a very fulfilling life that's kind of created by your own beauty. That should always come from within, by the way. If you lack all of that, it will manifest in your life as what you will see around you and that's not going to be very pleasant so please go to a therapist and do heal yourself because at the end of the day don't forget we all need therapy okay the reason a lot of people lack boundaries is because a 
they were either raised as a good girl or good boy, you know, because the parents always emphasized on being the nice girl, forgive and forget, be the bigger one, be the bigger one. For example, coming back to me and my, you know, sister's example, I was always told to be the bigger one, forgive and forget, forgive and forget. And I remember it, it got to a point where I forgave and forget so much that it started to ruin my self-esteem at a certain point. Because I had to dial down my self-respect, my ego, my self-esteem to zero, not even zero, all the way to minus, all the way to minus, to even be able to breathe in the same room, to even be able to eat on the same table, to even be able to exist in the same capacity. How was that healthy? It wasn't. A lot of people sometimes have a lot to say when a girl moves out, but nobody has the guts or the audacity to actually ask the person, hey, was there a particular reason? You know, and if somebody would be asking me the reason why I moved out at that time, I was going through such hard time. It was like a lot of therapy, a lot of healing I needed at that time. Like, and I was doing that. I was working so hard on myself at that time. Oh my God. It's like I was literally crying myself to sleep every single day day like every single day why because i lacked boundaries had i only had healthier boundaries at the time and stopped listening to everybody who would always say forgive and forget and be the bigger one he 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 because always a victim is told that have you noticed every single time this is being said to a victim by the way you know nobody tells the bully to be the big and better one forgive it's always the victim who is told this right a victim of any type, whether it's a victim of, you know, disrespect, misbehavior, bully, whatever you want to call it, everything. It's always the victim who's being told this so that they don't come up with their own reactions. Because if they react, it might go even more worse, you know, and everybody's probably scared of that or whatever. And trust me, as an Aries, you don't want me to react because it's going to go down really, really bad. And I know this about myself, which is exactly why I try to keep calm most of the time. And then I go cold turkey. For me, it's a better structure because at the end of the day, I always come out as the winner and that is what matters to me. To be healthier, happier and keep going upwards. For me, that's the best thing ever. It's not feeling like I've accomplished something because, you know, I opened my big mouth. And no, that's really, that does not give me any type of satisfaction. What gives me satisfaction is doing my inner work, keep on improving in all areas of my life and keep going up. And yeah. While I'm at it, make sure I look pretty, uh, make sure I kind of lost a lot of weight, thank God for that. And the reason I only gained that weight in the first place was because I was so overwhelmed, I was dealing with a lot, lots of therapy, blah, blah, blah. And that, you know, I, I, I was so overwhelmed, overthinking, overly feeling that I used food as my kind of coping mechanism. You know, I started to find uh, comfort in food a lot. Which, again, I'm not going to complain about that because it could be worse. I could be addicted to some substance. I don't know. It could have been that way also. But thank God it wasn't because I'm also somebody who has a lot of faith. I pray a lot. I'm, of course, I'm not somebody who will just crazily get addicted with things, you know. So I kind of used food as an escape or as a means to comfort myself and find soothe in that. And at some point I was like, you know what, I'm so done with that identity of mine. I'm so done with that version of mine because what, what started to define me was hmm, a victim of her own emotional irregulation. Basically, that was me. Like the whole last year, I would say that was me. The whole of 2023, that was me. Things only started to change around this year, which is 2024. But anyway, the time is always right every time you want to make, start making a change, start creating boundaries for yourself to a point where it will now scare those people off. Good for you. Because now we can say you are in a better place, in a more powerful position. Good for you. I'm so proud of you. I hope that you create boundaries. I hope that you already have. If not, do that now. Cut it. No time for any kind of BS from no one, no matter who it is, no matter how kind you want to be with your own people, you cannot be that naive and silly. Nah. Yes, we believe in having a clean, good heart because people like this are always blessed more. Please be that. Of course, be a very kind-hearted person. But being silly and stupid, no. Being that naive where you almost become very ill, no. Suffering so much, but still not talking about it. 
so much so that you become overweight, overwhelmed, overeats. No. Doing so much for others where you almost feel exhausted because you're literally not even getting the same consideration, sincerity, and respect in return. No. Allowing someone to constantly disrespect you even as a joke because you think, oh, they don't mean bad, it's okay. No. Mm -hmm. Say no to all of this crap. And start saying yes to what your inner feeling is telling you. Do you feel somebody is being super, super mean, almost like a bully to you? Cut it. Even if you think you're a very strong person, hey, look at me. Do you really think I can be bullied? Uh, hello, I'm somebody who helps victims. I cannot be the victim myself at all. That's not me, that's not my personality. However, there are some people that will always cross that boundary and really disrespect you, be mean to you even in front of 10 people if they have to because they hate your very existence. Why? Because you're probably better in every way, better in every way than all of them combined. Of course they feel triggered in your presence. Of course it makes sense. They always want to be like you. You inspire them so much. They want everything that you have and you do and you experience. But at the same time, disregard you, toss you aside, misbehave with you because they just don't know how to express their admiration for you. They're so not healed. They are literally functioning from their egos so much so they're so blind they can't even see reality. They can't even see themselves, let alone anyone else. What do we call this? That's a Kareem boy, that's an Uber girl because they're functioning from this surface level persona. All they see is surface level stuff. They are not deep themselves. They don't see... You know, it's like, it's one of those people that actually judge a book by its cover. Yeah, that's, that's that. They don't know what's written inside. Oh, they will just see the cover of the book is orange, uh, means I can't even take it seriously. You know? Oh, this girl has it all. Mm, you know what? We can be very mean to her because she really deserves that. She deserves to be humbled. Or so they think. Because they always feel that they're entitled. Entitled little folks. Entitled little with literally no life of their own. And honestly, this is probably the first time that I've spoken so openly about these kinds of things. Whoa, but it feels good as much as I would hate for this to be out there, but it feels great, you know? I think I'm I'm now in my power. Friends, this, that, relatives, even if it's family, if they're not gonna be, uh, anyone uh, is not going to be respectful or kind or open-hearted or welcoming or even not give me space at the table, do you know what? then I don't have to respect you either. Let it be like a two-way street then also in this regard as well because you know, I can't be the only one being always nice, being always open and welcoming and kind and giving. No, at least meet me halfway. You don't have to do that much. Meet me halfway at least, right? And if you can't, well, I'm not gonna be that nice then either. I mean, I didn't sign any contract that said nice girl syndrome. But you apparently have signed a contract that says mean girl. So you know what? Well, you stay in your own lane, but it's just not going to be me. Add another character in there. Anyway, guys. If you still haven't read my ebook, go take a look on this link. It's also written in my description below. The High Value Women ebook. You can read all about how to improve yourself in all areas of your life and be the healed version of yourself. That's a high quality woman because she gets the most out of life. It's not gonna be the uber girls, okay? So elevate yourself from the uber girl level and step into your top 10 identity and be the high value woman. The one we would also call the rich bitch energy because she's rich in everything, rich in life experience, rich in persona, rich in creativity, influence, inspiration, elevation, intuition, connection, God's connection. She is rich in every single thing. So she always gets more of everything. And also money-wise, she gets the best of everything and the most of everything because she has that frequency. And if you want to tune into that frequency, read the High Value Women ebook, it's linked below. And if you're ready to start your own digital marketing business, do business the feminine way. I work only literally three to four hours a day. Yeah, even on a Sunday. I don't have a day off, but that's okay because it's, it's just three hours of work every single day. So I can't complain. Because again, it's just three hours of work every single day like a princess from home. So I can't really complain. If you want to start your own business and your own journey, you can learn everything. It's inside the DWA community. It's also linked below. You can learn all the skills from DWA and then start your own business. It will teach you everything, how to do A to Z, all the stuff that you need to take in order to have your social media optimized, in order to make you sales and start your own funnel. It will teach you exactly everything, how to automate your systems, how to automate your business. It's gonna teach you everything 
whether you're looking to start your own digital marketing journey, whether you want to sell your recipes, sell your ebooks, whether you want to sell your coaching programs or mentorship programs, whatever you want to sell online, this course is going to teach you exactly how to do everything step by step. It also has modules on mindset, selling in your stories and your DMs, convincing, how to make sales, affiliate marketing, digital marketing, email marketing, social media marketing. You're going to learn so much and the community is only growing. There's more than 78,000 people inside already as I speak and the number is only going to increase. I think by 2025, probably they're going to be way more than 150,000 members already inside. You can see the testimonies. I share so much about that on my Instagram. Go check it out and start your own goddamn business because you all should be about creation. Stop consuming silly content that's not giving you any outcomes in life. Start creating and generating cash flow. And go convert your own content into cash, stories into success, and posts into prosperity. All the best. I'll see you in my next video.